Iran has lambasted a blackout at its underground Natanz nuclear facility in Isfahan province. The incident happened early on Sunday. Iran stated that it was an act of nuclear terrorism and said Tehran reserves the right to respond but did not specify what actions Iran may initiate. Viewers may note that the enrichment and centrifuge assembly lines in Isfahan's Natanz are the country's premier facility. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Israel is slowing down Iran's nuclear program. Let's get started. Vehicle combat game, War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Ali Akbar Salehi, the head of the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran AEOI, said on Sunday, the act against the Natanz nuclear enrichment center shows the defeat of the opponents of the country's industrial and political advancements in preventing the nuclear industry's significant development. It was reported that there was no loss of life or environmental pollution as a result of the incident. Iran's foreign minister, Mohammad Javad Zarif, vowed revenge against Israel for the attack. Israel's Khan Public Radio cited intelligence sources as saying that Israel's Mossad spy agency had carried out a cyber attack at the site. As of now, Israel made no official comment on the incident. Iran struck the nuclear deal in 2015 with China France, Germany, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The deal, which is formally known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action JCPOA, saw Iran drastically reduce its enrichment of uranium under the watch of IAEA inspectors and in return got the economic sanctions removed. The U.S., under the Trump administration, had unilaterally withdrawn from the deal citing non-compliance and imposed stringent sanctions. Since the U.S. exit, Iran has, in response, abandoned all the deal's limits on its uranium enrichment. President Joe Biden, who took office in January, said he's willing to re-enter the nuclear deal. Recently, countries began negotiations in Vienna to find a way forward. According to the new U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, Iran may be just a matter of weeks away from accumulating enough fissile material to build its first nuclear warhead. Iranian officials have repeatedly threatened to withdraw from the NPT, or Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, if Americans didn't relax the economic pressure. NPT is currently the only legal restriction on its development of nuclear weapons. Israel, which is under the leadership of Netanyahu, has vowed not to see the deal revived. Iran has approximately 1,000 strategic missiles that are controlled by the Revolutionary Guard. It consists of 300 short-range ballistic missiles, including Iranian-made Shahab-1, Scud-B, Shahab-2, Scud-C, as well as Tandar-69, CSS-8. It also has domestically produced Shahab-3 strategic intermediate-range ballistic missiles, IRBM with a reported range of up to 1,000 kilometers or 620 miles. The Ghadar-1, with an estimated 1,600 kilometers or around 995 miles, and a Shahab-3 variant known as Sajil-2, with a reported range of up to 2,400 kilometers or 1,490 miles. These can reach Israel. If these missiles could be armed with a nuclear warhead, which Tel Aviv is suspecting Iran of trying, then it will represent a significant strategic threat. For this reason, Israel is suspected of recently stepping up clandestine operations targeting Iran.
This is not the first time Natanz nuclear facility has come under attack. In June 2020, Natanz was hit by an explosion that caused a large fire, which was also suspected to have been orchestrated by Israel. Iran had said sabotage is certain in that explosion, but did not publish more information because of security concerns. Not only this, Israel and its intelligence agency, Mossad, have been blamed for the killing of top Iranian officials and scientists. On the morning of the 12th of January 2010, nuclear scientist Masoud Ali Mohammadi, said to be a particle physics professor at Tehran University, was killed when a remote-controlled bomb attached to a motorcycle exploded outside his home in the Iranian capital. While Iranian officials said at the time that the professor did not work for the country's atomic energy organization, Western and Israeli intelligence claimed otherwise. In November 2010, two scientists who allegedly held chief roles in the Iranian nuclear program were struck almost simultaneously by bombs in Tehran. In one of the incidents, Majid Shariari and his wife were severely wounded in a car bombing on the 29th of November. Shariari died of his wounds almost immediately. He was thought to be involved in weaponizing nuclear power. In the other attack, which was also a car bomb, Ferry Down Abbasi Devani was severely wounded. He was head of physics at Tehran's Imam Hussein University. There were many such assassinations, and a recent one drew worldwide attention. Mohsen Fakhrizadeh was assassinated on the outskirts of the capital, Tehran, on November 27th. He was the alleged architect of Iran's nuclear weapons program. Tehran insists its nuclear program is peaceful, but the International Atomic Energy Agency IAEA, says Iran carried out activities relevant to the development of nuclear explosive device in a structured program through the end of 2003. Some reports suggest that damage at Natanz was more extensive than had been reported in Iran. Israel is using all its tricks to halt Iran's rapid progress in its nuclear program. For example, in the case of Mosin Fakhrizadeh, an electronically controlled gun turret located inside a parked blue Nissan pickup truck was used to shoot at the sedan carrying him. The system was thought to be connected with a satellite. Israel has the expertise to carry out these kind of missions and pulling out all its stocks. Especially Mossad is one of the best in this regard and Iran will need to up its game. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.